Amen. The title of the message is exactly that. There we go. He says He brings freedom. So whenever we embrace the righteousness of God, the freedom is already decreed and declared. And the freedom of God establishes us. You know, you could walk in, you could even choose to live in an atmosphere where you haven't got enough and things are hard and difficult. And that's all where your focus is. In a short span of time, you'll find that it squeezes the life out of you. Because it cannot, you cannot live in hopelessness. You cannot live in an atmosphere of fear. You only live where there's liberty, where the Spirit of God is with you. That's where we get to live our best life. So this morning, a good word to stand on is in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17. It says, for the Lord is the Spirit. And note that it's the big capital S, the big Spirit. He is God. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, and I actually want to also add a word there where it's welcome. And you know, sometimes we've got to say to the Father, Father, you are welcome in my life today. Because many are hostile towards Him instead of allowing Him to be welcome in your life. He says there is freedom. And that means if you take God as your partner, uh, his partnership will cause for you to be successful. But if he's never ever a partner in your life and you're leaning on self, it's going to be a hard journey. It's not going to be an easy journey. Because God is where he is welcome in our lives. And verse 18 says to us, so all of us, who does that mean? All of us who have had that veil removed. And that means where the truth has pierced the lies of the enemy. You know, that old religious way, you've got to earn it. You've got to make it happen. And if you don't work hard enough, it just can't. God says, only believe, did he not say? So if we can believe, we can receive. Is that right? So that's that veil that is removed, that old religious veil of works is removed. Removed, can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. So where's the glory inside of us? We've got to learn to draw it out and it comes through relationship. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him. That is good news. So as we grow with the Lord, we become more like Him because our desires are more like Him. Amen? As we are changed. And I want to ask, you've been a child of God for how many years? Have you changed yet? Have you been transformed yet? The things I hate, I no longer do. Is that, have we been transformed yet? Have we allowed the veil to be removed? Have we allowed, have we given the Holy Spirit dominion in our lives? Rulership, or are we still in charge? So that's something to ask. Because he says, and the Lord who is the Spirit, he says, makes us more and more like him. More and more like him. And you know, you can't put the light out. When there's more of him in you, the light will shine through you. His love, his characteristics will shine through you. His love and tolerance and gentleness and kindness will shine through you. Because your character is changed. Your ways are changed to become more and more like him. He says, we're changed into the glorious image. Hallelujah for that. I love that about God. That means you don't want to waste time on all these things of the world. You just want to live in that atmosphere where you can hear his voice and that his desires are your desires. His ways are your ways. And there's no country double, double deal at any stage, a double characteristics. Is that not true? Amen. So it takes a bit of work, but it is a faith walk. Is that right? 
I want to look at a very good example this morning. Hearing and responding. So if we follow the instructions of the Lord, even in our most leanest seasons or our most desperate moments, God will send you help. And the help he sends you is to make cause for your life because of obedience to be better. He can change whatever is difficult and make all possibilities possible for you. We're going to look at a widow this morning that inclined her ear to his sayings. And when she responded with what his instruction was, she became exceptionally blessed. And so 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 is a very good example. And note that she was a member of a group of prophets. Her husband was a prophet. So one day the widow, in verse 1, of a, a member of the group of prophets, uh, prophets came to Elijah and she cried out, My husband who served you is dead. And you know how he feared the Lord. So he was obedient. But now a creditor has come, threatened to take my two sons as slaves. This must be a desperate moment. And you know, amazing that she went there and she declared and she disclosed her information. And so in verse 2, it says, what? Let me go back one more. It said there, about her emptiness, um, actually, could you help me there at the other desk, please? Hallelujah, thank you very much. And she said there, what can I do to help is what the prophet said to her in verse 2. Right, thank you so much. In Second King 4 verse 2, what can I do to help is what he asked, Elijah asked her. Tell me, what do you have in your house? It's amazing that God is always looking for what have you got in your house? Second King verse four, chapter four, verse two. What have you got in your house? Amen. Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. It's amazing that the anointing will change everything. What do we use olive oil for? We use it to cook with, but we also use it to bless with and release the anointing. Is that not right? So the anointing. So I thought about that. I thought, the anointing. So what will the anointing do for you and me today? The anointing will change every aspect. Thank you. Every aspect of your life. It'll bring change, transformation. It'll ignite uh, her very resources that she needed. And so in verse 3, and Elijah said, borrow as many empty jars. So an instruction came. And the instruction that he gave her is go and borrow empty bottles, empty jars, as you can, as many as you can get from your friends and from your neighbors. And I can just imagine what her neighbors must have thought. They were looking at her conditions. They were looking at how hard and tough and difficult her season had become. And none of them were moving to help her at all. So desperate, she's desperate, busy losing her family. Her family is about to become the biggest slaves. And yet the instruction is get empty bottles, get empty jars. What have you got in your house is a question God is asking you today. Are you in a lean season at the moment? Can you hear the instruction? What have you got? God will take what we give to him and he'll make it much more. Many times we've got things that are stacked up and stacked up, could be wood, could be anything, could be a metal, could be steel, could be material, could be anything. But all it is doing is collecting dust. Never put to work to do anything for the Lord. But if we give and make available what we have in access that we're not even using, and we ask the Lord, Lord, here it is. Here's all the stacked up wood that I've got. Here's all the stacked up metal that I've got. It's been lying there. It's rotting. It is rusting away. What can I do with this? God will open your eyes. He'll give you a good idea. 
and an idea that will change the rest of your life if we will just surrender to God. Lord, help me. I need help. Yes, she had it. She said, I need help. So in verse 4, then God, into, go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Now, why did he say shut the door? That's a very strange instruction. That means surrender what you have and now seek my face. Close the door to hopelessness. Close the door to negativity. Close the door to anything that speaks contrary to what I can do with your little, is literally what he was saying. And start pouring the olive oil from the flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. Amen. So what an instruction would that be? If God said to you today, go and close the door and wait for my instruction. And here comes the instruction. Start pouring from the bottle that you have, from the provision that you have, and start filling all these empty jars. Now, would it make sense that you take your little and you start pouring and it becomes much? And this little never, ever seems to pour out uh, into emptiness. It's just pouring out. What a beautiful miracle is that. Amen to that. And so in verse 5, he says, So they did, she did, as she was told. Can you see that obedience produces the blessing? She was obedient. She recognized this is God's instruction spoken through the prophet. Her sons kept bringing jars to her. They were looking for more because they were seeing the miracle manifesting right before their eyes. Can you imagine the fear they must have had prior to that? But how the joy was starting to bubble up in their hearts, seeing that God has not forgotten them. That must be a beautiful experience when you see that Yah is my breakthrough. God never forgot me. He never, never did not listen to my request, my, my, my prayer I made to him. And so she filled one after the other. Out of the little oil she had, it just filled and filled and filled bottles. I don't know if you've ever collected bottles and thought they were precious and maybe you'll use them for something. Might just be that God's going to give you your access like that. So in verse 6, soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said. She was on a roll now. I mean, she got into pouring and pouring and facilitating and facilitating the instruction. Have you ever had follow through is a question I want to ask you. Because if we don't have follow through, we don't attach our faith to the instructions. So bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. So amazing, God will fill it to the brim. And he, he would, he's faithful to his word. Because he followed through right to the final bottle that was empty, was filled to the brim. So when you go home today, go and look at those empty bottles and ask God, what is the instruction here? Yeah? What is the instruction yeah, Lord? Give it to me. I'm closing the door on, on hopelessness today. I'm closing the door on negativity today. I'm closing the door purposefully. I'm going to go and receive your instruction with what can I do with what is in my hands. And the minute we start responding and we do what God tells us to do, the blessing flows. So in verse 6, soon every container was full to the brim. Note there was nothing that was half empty. Nothing was left half full. It was filled to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to them, and there aren't any more to fill. It is to the brim. It is finished. It is complete, and the assignment is complete. Have you ever finished an assignment for the Lord? 
or did she get out of the frying pan when the heat was turned on a bit too much? Because uncomfortable will show up, dry will show up, lean will show up, difficult will show up, frustration will show up. But will you follow through because you heard what the Lord said to you? His faithfulness will carry you through. So verse 7, it says there that when she told the man of God what had happened, she must have run to him and she must have testified and her face must have shone and she must have been in tears and happiness and every combination of every emotion you can imagine because that was a miracle that took place. And she told the man of God what had happened, and he said to her, Now, next instruction. Note that she didn't gather goods to make look good, uh, herself look good. She followed instructions. He says, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over forevermore. So, what did the access? They access the abundance because of obedience. Isn't that awesome? What a beautiful story. So did you know, and this is something to remember, emptiness can be a wonderful gift. We can see that her emptiness at that moment was a wonderful gift because God knew what to do with her emptiness. Is that not right? And this emptiness Elijah was in the right place at the right time, but she had to get off her blessed assurance. She had to go and seek the man of God. She had to go and talk and arrive there with faith in her heart. She couldn't have gone feeling sorry for herself and feeling ashamed and caught up in emotion. She had to have faith in her heart when she approached him. Because then she had an open ear to hear instruction. Because she wanted direction. She didn't just want to get things off her chest. She needed direction and she got direction. What do we do with direction? We need to learn how to follow through. So Elijah met this woman with nothing. No husband, no income, no food. It was desperate. No prospects, no future insight. Fear of losing her family. The last bit that she had was losing her family because she had everything else was already missing. So when Elijah instructed her to gather whatever she had left, she had a choice. She could have listened to it and thought, this is crazy. I'm not going to follow that through and lean on her own understanding. But she set that aside all she had was that one jar of oil and a few empty jars. That's all she had. No food, nothing else. No money, no resources, and really no future. So the empty jars were borrowed from her neighbors. Remember, she borrowed them. She obviously returned them when they were, you know, finished, sold, empty, all the resources. So the empty jars were borrowed now think about it. She begins to pour the oil on the instruction of the prophet into the empty vessels, one jar after the other, and the provision just flowed. Obedience will always cause for the provision to just consistently flow, consistently flow. It says that the blessing of the Lord adds no sorrow. Whenever we hold on to the blessing, there will be no sorrow. There will be no hopelessness wherever the blessing of the Lord is welcomed in our lives. And she kept pouring this very oil into all the empty ones until they were all filled to the full. And only then does the first one she started dry up. So only at the point after all of the pouring and the pouring consistency... So remember, what is the word that we're looking for? Consistency. If consistency is in our relationship with the Holy Spirit, we will never dry up. We will never be without direction. We will never, ever have our blessing removed and filled with sorrow. And there is nothing about, nothing that moves 
There's something that truly moves the hand of God, but the nothing can move nothing if we don't add the obedience to it. So remember, obedience is, it always produces the very resources that is needed in our lives. And God loves moving us all to empty places. His love will always move us out of the empty into the abundance. The love of God never runs out. It is always available wherever we are. And God loves it when we can no longer lean on nothing else except his provision, his ability, his presence moves mountains out of the way. So think about your mountain today. What is the mountain you're facing? Is it the mountain of dryness? Is it a mountain of division? Is it the mountain of don't know where to from here? Is it the mountain I've knocked on so many doors and nothing is opening? What mountain is it that you're facing right now? If we prepare to bring the presence of God into the midst of that, everything will work out and work out well. Amen? So if we are not experiencing God's provision and His presence, it could be that we're not empty enough. We've got to recognize where we're at. Otherwise, we can never move to where we need to get to. And a lot of people can be blinded by what we're going through, by putting a focus and a blame on something else instead of saying, Lord, I'm in business. It's about you and me. And if it's not you and me, I know I'm not going to come through this. Because only when the strength and the ability of God comes into the situation, because you welcome the Father into your situation, and you don't allow an independent spirit to be louder than the Lord that you need, then things will begin to change. Could we be distracted at any stage? It is so easy to get distracted and caught up. This widow could have been so distracted and so caught up with what was happening that she could have forgotten to approach the Lord with a heart of faith. She went there with the expectancy. She knew it was already dire straight. She was already in a terrible situation, but there was expectancy in her heart. She had a heart move towards the Holy Spirit. And so God's word will always teach us that emptiness can be a gift from the Lord, a refocus, a realignment, a re-looking at, assessment. What is it that I need to do for the Lord to come forth in the situation? Could it be that we need to start stepping up in our prayer and our declaration time? Could it be that we need to start refocusing and remembering, reminding ourselves what God told us about the season that lies ahead? Could it be that we need to really start remembering that God speaks to us whenever we inquire from Him? He doesn't leave us without His direction. Amen? So God's Word teaches us that emptiness can be a gift from the Lord. Remember, he's not the one stripping you. He brings you to a place where you get the opportunity to look what needs to go, what attitude needs to leave. God's word teaches us that emptiness tells us we have a need that can be met by our God. Because God says sufficient is his grace, is it not? He says, Great is his faithfulness. It is the truth. And maybe it's a time for us to also embrace the truth and say, Lord, you are faithful. This that is going on, I recognize is not you. Give me a desire to pierce the lie of the enemy. Show me how to pierce the lie with your words today. Remember, Jesus pierced the lies of the enemy that promised him the world when he came out of his fast, do you remember? And he had to do something to get a different result. 
He was hungry. He'd fasted. He was obedient to Father God. When, when the temptation came, if you will do this, because you know Satan always knows what you need. He recognized that Jesus needed bread. He needed to be satisfied with resources in his stomach. So he says, if you will bow your knees to me as far as your eyes can see, I will give it to you. He can't give you anything because he doesn't have it. Jesus is the one that has the resources. And if we can remember that whatever we put our eye on, God is the creator of it all. Satan can't give you anything. Amen? Except trouble, right? So God's word teaches us that it is possible that we may not be empty enough. And maybe self-importance needs to go. Pride needs to leave. Um, hopelessness needs to be addressed. Um, negativity needs to be addressed. Sometimes our focus can be so negative. We could be complaining instead of praising. Anybody been there? Easy to complain instead of praise. Note that complaining and praise somehow... They are brother and sister almost together. But the better option is the praising. There is an option, yeah. And many times when you look at something and you're uncertain about it, the best thing is to say, there is an option, yeah. God, open my eyes to the option, the solution. So, okay, the tractor is broken. There is an option, yeah. God, show me how to get this right. Show me how to sort this one. And God will give you a simple little clue and a simple little instruction. And you apply it like the oil, a little bit of oil. And there she had provision. She could pay all her debt, be debt free, save her sons from becoming slaves. And they had provision for as long as they lived. What a beautiful plan. There are pastors that bought property and were going through difficult seasons in Texas. And in places where oil has never been found, they were drilling for water. And guess what came out of the earth? Oil. So guess what it did? It brought supernatural provision for ministries to be birthed out of that. So what does God do? God will give you the supernatural there they were looking for water. The water came afterwards, but the oil was important for them. So imagine you are busy drilling on your land, and there is the flow of oil. And you become the richest and the most numerous in the territory, and it has never, ever been heard of before. So what does God do? Supernatural in the empty. Supernatural in the dry. Amen. Heard of two children that were digging in the back and they had seen a little movie about treasures and they decided they were also going to dig in their backyard. So their mom and dad laughed at them and thought these kids are absolutely over the top but they're not going to stand in the way. And as they started digging, they found this um, hard uh, uh, square box in the ground. And so they called their mom and dad, and mom and dad thought, this is amazing. And as they opened it, it landed up being a treasure of a family that lived there many years ago, like probably about eight generations ago. And inside was gold. They had gold coins, and they had silver coins that uh, were being shipped to different countries. And they found the treasure. So, I mean, what are the chances of finding a treasure in the backyard of your property? They had faith. They were looking for. They went there with a mission. Imagine you open up your, your land and you've got this mission and you've just got this drive. You've got to do it. And there is the inheritance of families that lived long before them. Emptiness. So God's word will always teach us that only God can truly fill us. Nothing in this world will ever satisfy, but the satisfying comes from the Father. And when we receive God's plan to save us, 
today and save our lives today, we walk in the divine blueprint of a beautiful life God actually chose for you. And he wants us to choose what he has. Today, the word and the confirmation in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not of disaster to give you a future and a hope. Is that what the widow found? Did she find a plan that wasn't for disaster? Was her hope restored? Yes. Was her future restored? Yes. Isn't that the kind of life God wants us to discover? Is to know that he knows the plans. He's not confused about the future. He has a great future for us. Even in, in the midst of impossibilities, God knows what needs to be done. And in verse 12, he says, And those days when they pray, I will listen. I love that. So whenever we pray in those days when we seek the face of God, when we seek his direction, this precious widow must have been a widow of prayer. She must have prayed before she went to see the prophet. So she had expectancy in her heart. She, she was confident that when she was going to speak to them, they were going to order her footsteps into something better. Amen to that? Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, If you look for me, and there's a key, wholeheartedly. If you come to the Lord, don't come with half a heart. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Maybe I qualify, maybe I don't. If we are living on maybes, it'll never come together. It's your faith that changes it. It's your fearless reliance in him. Only God can do this. Only God can change this situation. He says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So when you come up for prayer, come wholeheartedly. Lord, it's about you. I'm seeking your face today. Answer my request. So when you do that, you will leave with a download of insight from the Lord and he will order your footsteps in great success. Verse 14 says, I will be found by you. So God doesn't hide that you can't find him. He, is, he becomes visible when we need him. He says, I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity. Isn't that amazing? When we find him, he ends our captivity. He ended her captivity. He ended her son's future. And he says, and I will restore your fortunes. Did you read that in the New Living Translation? I will restore your fortunes. Right? I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you. And I will bring you home again to your own land. So we do have an inheritance. And the inheritance is known by the Lord. He will gather us and he will grant us the petition of our heart. And many times we don't pray with this understanding. God says, I will give you land that you didn't even work for. I was in meditation and the Lord says, I will give I have given you land you didn't even work for. I have given you an inheritance you had no, no input for. And so think about that. When has the Lord spoken to you about your inheritance? And what do you do with it? Do you jot it down or you just say, yes, Lord, yeah, I hear what you're saying. A lot of us listen like that. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but we don't apply any faith to it. We don't apply any thank you to it. No thanksgiving, Lord, you've spoken to me. I receive it in my heart today. I receive the inheritance. You are decreeing today. And when we decree and we take it and we receive it by faith, it is a done deal. 
It's not out there sort of just sitting in midair. It's been received by faith. Amen? And so the Lord says to us today, I want to bring that back to you again. I will be found by you. Note that you don't have to look for someone else to find him, to introduce him to you. He says, I will be found by you. And why will we find him? Because we seek him wholeheartedly. We come after God expectant. And we know that if we come to him, we've entered into an agreement that Father God is in agreement with. Holy Spirit is in agreement. Jesus Christ will speak to you and Holy Spirit will manifest it to you. Amen? He says, and I will end your captivity. What are you wrestling with at the moment that you've tried to change? What have you been struggling with that you've really looked for solutions? If you take this and you bring it to God and say, end the captivity of this Lord, the limitation of this off of me today, the concern about the future, the concern about will we make it, the concern about what will business do, Whatever it might be, let's end that captivity today. God knows where we are, and he says, you will be found by me, and you will find me. He doesn't hide away from you. I will gather you out of the nations. So God's the only one that can do the shiftings. Shift the imposition for the blessing. Amen? And I will bring you home again to your own land. So does God know where you need to be? Absolutely. Does he know what he was, what, he, what he's designed for you? Absolutely. But he wants you to agree that he can and he's able to. Are you ready to believe? Let's pray wholeheartedly this morning. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, only God can change this. But he changes it when we go all out with a promise and we say, Lord, thank you that you said I will find you in the midst of trouble. You said you will speak to me in the midst of darkness. You said you will speak to me and I will hear you. For my sheep hear my voice is what the Lord says. So what do we need to do? Incline my ear to your sayings, Lord. And sometimes we're a bit slow to do that. But this morning we're doing it. Heavenly Father, we celebrate your beauty. We celebrate your holiness. We hold on to your deity today. We know that every word that you speak to us, you mean. Yea and amen, it always is. And today we come with expectancy and faith in your word, faith in your promises. And we bring each and every one to you today that is going through trouble, that is going through captivity, that is going through maybe debt, wanting to be rescued out of not enough. And we know that you said if we will seek you with all of our hearts and inquire from you, you will direct our footsteps in the journey and the road to take ahead. And today we come and we ask, Lord, that you would direct everyone's footsteps today in the provision you've got and in the good health that you've got and in the new strength that you have and in your wise counsel. Will you direct our footsteps? Speak to us about the future as we choose today to embrace your truth, to hold on to it, to believe it, to receive it into our hearts in full measure. But this morning, would you just raise your hands and say, Heavenly Father, I decree and declare that you are my Lord. You my Savior. I put my trust in you. I believe that the Holy Spirit... His counsel will counsel me daily in the ways I should walk. 
And I believe that your truth causes for freedom to permeate through my life the fullness of your glory. In Jesus' name, I believe it today and I receive it today with all of my heart. And today, I rebuke fear off of my life, lack off of my life. In Jesus' name, hopelessness to off of my life. In Jesus' name, I believe God's word is a yay and an amen word in my life. In Jesus' name. And if you believe that, then say amen to that. Amen to that. Amen to that.